Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Brix PLC PID with PWM output. So detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So up on my screen here, you'll see my do more uh, designer software is actually running and we're online with our controller. We're in run mode. And let's just take a look at our system configuration that we have. And under our um, local I.O. You can see here there's my my main CPU, my bricks. I do have an expansion card in here which is a relay output that I'm going to use. And then we have our analog in and analog out. So we'll look at the module configuration. We'll look at the analog in and we're using one channel and that one channel is actually getting a 0 to 10 volt input and we're actually scaling that to 0 to 100. So this will represent degrees Celsius. We'll set OK for that. Cancel and we'll cancel out of that. So that is our system hardware that we have. If we actually look at our physical hardware, what you'll see here is there's my bricks, just like we did in our, our system configuration. We have our relay output module that we're going to use. We have our analog in, analog out, and then we have this signal conditioner that we've discussed previously that actually will take our thermocouple input, which is actually uh, reading the temperature of the water in this mug, and coming back into my input and my output of this is my 0 to 10 volt DC which is being fed back into my analog input card. So the output relay is actually going into a immersion heater located right over here which is actually heating the water up into my mug right there. So the water in the mug is being heated by the immersion heater and being monitored by a thermocouple um, coming back into my in analog input to tell me exactly what the temperature is. So what we're going to do is actually use PID um, instruction within the Do More uh, uh, Designer software and we're going to see how that actually works. So up on my screen here you'll see that we have our ladder logic and if I just click on my uh, cl my PID closed loop controller. You'll see here that our PID structure is PID zero and our loop algorithm is position. We are, the control loop is forward acting and that's about it. That's all we set right now and then it actually will uh, predetermine and es establish these parameters for me. My uh, my P, my I, and then my D, my present value, my set value of my PID. So let me just uh, close that down. And then what we do is we're going to move RX1, which is my raw data that's coming in uh, through my signal conditioner into my analog input, and we're going to move that into my PID set value or present value. So then what we'll do is actually take a look at our PID because we are online and let's just get the status. So you can see here that my present value currently right now is 44.97208. There we go. So that's actually what that particular rung will do. So it just moves the set value in or the present value that we're reading through our thermocouple. Then we have a relay output that's actually controlling that immersion heater. And that relay output, um, what we want is PWM or pulse width modulated. So what that will do is if it's uh, using high speed counters, we use uh, PWM instruction or a, a logic within there. But because it's going to be relatively slow, we're going to use time proportional output. So we have a cycle right now. If we look at this instruction, we have a cycle time of two seconds. Our continuous input comes from our PID uh, uh, loop, PID loop zero, and our output. And that output 
because we didn't scale the output, it actually goes from zero to 100. And what we're doing is we're actually turning on our discrete output Y8, which is located right here, as you can see that flashing, um, actually activating our, our PID or look, viewing our PID. And what you'll see next is a, a PID initialization or PID INT instruction. And it actually gives you the values of our uh, P, I, and D values that we're currently running. And if you don't have one of these in the program and you do your auto tuning, as we will demonstrate, you will see that it will automatically prompt you to put one in, or what it will do is prompt you to actually change those uh, values. So that is our, our entire program. So only a few rungs. And what we're gonna do is Right now you can see that we are controlling. Let's take, a, let's take a look at our logic and we'll hit status. Once we do that, what you'll see is the status here of our PID changes. And now we can actually see exactly what mode we're in. Currently right now we're in auto mode. Our, our P, I, and D rates are right up here. Our sample time is right here. Our output, our bias, present value, set value, etc. It's all located right here. It also provides a nice chart that you can actually monitor with. So that is um, the actual PID instruction. And then if we look down, you can see our move going in. We can see our time proportional and uh, the percentage that we are actually trying to look for right now. It's at 11 at six. So um, you can see that how that relates to that two second time interval that the, the relay is actually pulsing. Then our initialization during the first scan, and that's it. So that is our PID instruction, our closed loop in controller monitoring this uh, uh, process. So let's look under view, and under view we have a couple of different options. We have uh, a view, a PID overview. So here we can actually look at our loop and what our bias is, and gives you a graphical information of what's actually happening. So let's close that down and we'll also under the view we have our PID um, uh, view and the PID view um, looks like this. So we have a nice scaled chart here. It gives me my present value and set value located right here. And here's my output values and the terms that they are at. So what we can do is um, here is where we would actually do our PID uh, auto tuning. And that's what we're going to do now. So the first thing we'll do right now, we're currently at 45. So let's go override and we'll put this first of all, um, let's put this in manual mode and you can see it in manual mode. What it will do is continue as that same output and it'll continuously cycle. And then what we want to do is you can see our set point is 45. So let's change our set point now to, we'll say 50 and I'll write that in. So our 50 is up here. And what we'll do is we will now change this back into our automatic and we will auto tune and we'll auto tune our PID close loop and we will start the auto tune. So let's move that over. So you see now what we're doing is we are currently having the output come on. It's on all the time. Oh, no, it's not. So let's just stop that right now. Cancel our auto tune. All right, and we'll close this down. All right, and now let's look at again over, over right here. Let's look at uh, what we're actually controlling. 
So we're at 45, our set point here. Let's go back to our set point at 50. There we go. And now let's do our auto tune. PID, close loop. And then we'll start our auto tune. So what we should see is our output when we started auto tune is on and it continues to be on. And what we'll do is start ramping up. Let's change our scale value. And we can change that to, let's go 10. So we'll see that coming up to our 50. And what we want to see, in fact, is it'll go overshoot it. It'll come back down below it and then up again and over. So two cycles through above and below that set point and then our PID parameters will be tuned in. So what we've done is we've actually completed our auto tuning now and it's asking me now to return control to the ladder program or overwrite the loop parameter or, or overwrite the manual tuning. So let's just return control to the ladder program. And you see that we have our set point at 49. Let's just change that set point back to uh, 50 just so that we can uh, uh, quickly see our set point and then our present value as it, as it gains to that. And if we actually look back, I'll change the scaling factor here. You can see our two exact loops as we go through here until it finally corrected and did our, our auto tune itself. Let's just uh, close this down. And you see here that set all of our sample period, your P, I, and D in our sample time, which is 2.3 milliseconds, or 2.3 seconds, which is not bad. And then what you'll see is this chart here that we have our auto tune. It's actually said tune complete. And what we can do is we can then take the parameters and add it to our, our PID initialization instruction or PID INIT instruction. So we'll just hit that. And what it will do is it will um, um, actually uh, put those parameters right into our PID initialization for us. And you can see here, we, it says insert at the top of the, of the instruction. We can copy the, the rung of the first scan, copy drive into the Windows clipboard, and we can paste it later, or we can uh, insert the rung. So either one, we could uh, um, actually initialize these parameters and put that right into our code as we've done before. So we'll say OK. So that is actually our auto tuning and PID. So you see here that we're pretty close to our set point. Now let's just try a set point of, we'll say, uh, 52. Let's go 53 and hit enter. And what we should do is with our set point up there, we will actually turn on our output, as you can see, and it'll drive this back up to our temperature. And it should actually drive it up without a whole lot of